Hello, everybody. My name is Ben, aka Lol McShiz, aka Lol Schmitz, aka Lo McSchmitz, aka the worst name in crypto. Um, I'm the ecosystem lead for um, Galactic Council, the build ores of HydroDX. And um, today I'm here to talk to you about how HydroDX is disrupting liquidity and treasury management. Now, before I ball post us to Valhalla, uh, I do need a slight disclaimer that all opinions today are my own, and they're not re necessarily representative of the wider Polkadot community. Um, there will be no financial advice. Do your own research. Um, battery's not included. So let's, let's start with what is the HydroDX Omnipool. So uh, the Omnipool is a next-gen AMM that is a reimagining of your conventional Uniswap style decks in which assets are, are pulled together in multiple pools. Uh, instead, we just yeet them all into one pool, which helps to unlock unparalleled efficiencies. Um, we chose to do this on Polkadot because it means that we can um, fob off the security side of things, the block production to the big boys um, with the six, seven, eight billion dollars worth of security uh, and concentrate instead on doing one thing, which is uh, facilitating the most economic, uh, capitally efficient trades possible. So we're going to go through a few sort of uh, features of the Omnipool and then we'll talk about how DAOs can leverage that and then how can we uh, make that even better. So uh, single-sided LPing, uh, essentially, Nice and easy, rather than your conventional model where you have the two assets um, that have to be paired together into a pool, and then for every new asset you want, you need another new pool. Uh, it's all just in one pool. Um, so this is facilitated through our hub token learner, um, which essentially, if you add a certain amount of liquidity for one asset, then the protocol will mint the synthetic asset um, learner. So this uh, unlocks great efficiency in trading. So rather than end up hopping between multiple different pools just to get uh, a swap for any two assets, uh, you get a, de a direct trade um, through Learner for any of those assets, uh, which means you um, suffer from lower, um, you, you don't have as much uh, price impact through multiple hops, and you because you've got more of each asset on, 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 um, in the pool trading against all other assets, you get lower slippage as well. So we like to think that the Omnipool is a fairly, in crypto, uh, stable uh, environment for LPs. So that is the hub asset learner. Uh, it has um, mechanisms baked in which help to keep things nice and stable. So the protocol fee, which is a portion of every trade, uh, is burnt, which helps to stabilize the price of Learner, um, which, same as when you're LPing with a stable coin or something like that, helps to uh, keep things more predictable. Now, we know one of the biggest dangers of LPing is um, impermanent loss. Um, so we are soon, TM, hopefully, uh, releasing dynamic fees, uh, which will essentially increase those fees at times when impermanent loss is most likely to be suffered by users. Um, and more importantly, um, many people get PTSD from hearing the term protocol and liquidity because of their own days. Um, but the Omnipool has uh, shortly authorized up to 15 million DAI worth of protocol and liquidity, uh, which means that the Omnipool itself can act as the liquidity provider of last resort. Um, this is great because typically LPs get wrecked when the, the liquidity gets rugged during volatile markets. So instead, the Omnipool isn't going to be rugging during volatile sessions and is certainly not going to be dumping on anyone's head. So security, uh, in addition to, of course, um, rigorous audits, uh, which any protocol should, should have in place, we've also had uh, economic audits of the uh, uh, price dynamics with, with Learner and everything else in the Omnipool. Um, we have a generous bug bounty program in place with ImmuneFi. But more importantly, we've baked in several mechanisms into the protocol design itself. Um, so we have liquidity caps in the Omnipool, which prevents any asset from getting unnecessary weights and foo barring everything. Um, we have dynamic withdrawal fees to help protect the Omnipool during times of volatility. 
We've got circuit breakers, which will stop you from adding and removing liquidity during times when uh, the Omnipool and your users would get wrecked. Uh, and soon, hopefully, we'll be deploying on Hydra uh, XCM rate limiter as well, which will use our own inbuilt oracles to essentially check if there's some super suspicious activity of one asset coming into the chain. So if something has depegged, for example, and somebody wants to max dump it to make um, use of the Omnipool liquidity and uh, exit ASAP, uh, then it can actually delay their, their XCM send in order to uh, keep users safe. So UX. In crypto, we have this meme where we think that you just build stuff and then people will come and use it. Um, but at the end of the day, we, we there's a lot of competing products in this space, and there's, uh, uh, in times like this, market times, it's, it's difficult to offer the right incentives to get people to use your products. So you need to think of other ways as to how you can get repeat users, right? So one of those is obviously to stop putting obstacles in their way for no reason. So for example, one thing we're really proud of at HydroDX is that you can pay for your transaction fees in any asset, right? So the first asset you send to the chain will be marked as your fee payment asset, and that can be changed at any time. So what this means is that you're never gonna get bricked because you need liquidity um, for a fee paying token. We also don't like to unnecessarily force people to connect to their wallet just because uh, we don't track any of your data or anything obscene like that. Uh, and also, I don't know why, but people seem to be really bearish on actually making UIs for mobile users. Um, this is obviously ludicrous, considering that most of the growing economies in the world are mobile-based entirely. Um, so all of our designs are dynamically um, built so that they adjust to smaller screens and, and things like that. So you can use uh, things like Nova Wallet and happily eat coins. So what does this mean for treasuries and DAOs? So first and foremost, providing this liquidity to the Omnipool is trustless, okay? So we've seen time and time again over these last few years that any time a central, centralized custodian is involved, uh, people get wrecked. Um, it's, you know, a bit of a meme at this point. So Omnipool, it's all trustless. Over the power of XCM, you can withdraw your liquidity at any time. You always maintain custody of that. As discussed, it's capitally efficient, right? So because you can single-sided LP, we all know that projects, when they start up, they have all of the supply of tokens in an abundance. They'll have allocations for several purposes. What we don't have, especially at the moment, is oodles of DOT or stable coins or something laying around to pair that with. So with the Omnipool, you just provide the asset that you want to provide liquidity for. Um, which is super useful, and you're obviously not paying Omnipool. We don't charge you fees for providing liquidity. Which, of course, unlocks better economics. So where you have repurposed, for example, uh, liquidity mining tokens uh, that you would have otherwise had to use to incentivize, you don't need to do that if you're providing your own liquidity. Um, so that allows you to repurpose those, perhaps for funding development or something other that's crucial during uh, these times. Um, and of course, it does unlock the potential in the right circumstances for your treasury to start earning trading fees on those trades. And what's super bullish is you don't have to worry about what you're going to pair those tokens with or what tokens are going to be available. So the moment you provide liquidity to the Omnipool, you instantly get access to all other tokens in the Omnipool. So at the moment, that's HDX, DOT, DAI, USDT, Polkadot decoded apparently, uh, Wrapped ETH, Wrapped Bitcoin, IBTC, ZTG and Astar. So straight away, this sort of scales more and more as you go. Um, you can expect to see CFG in there within a few days as their um, governance recently approved a motion to add liquidity to the Omnipool via this method. So uh, we are currently here in the Your Governance section. Uh, they have approved it and any day now that will be enacted which will mint their token into uh, the sovereign account on Hydra and then deposit it into the Omnipool. So that should happen within a few days. But there's more. Uh, there are more ways that Treasuries, DAOs, and their users can utilize the Omnipool and additional functionality. So we recently launched our feature, DCA, which allows anybody to DCA like a pro. So what this is is essentially automation of trades over a period of time. Um, which helps to take the emotion out of uh, buying, selling, whatever it is that you want to do, um, and allows you to do it over time and get a nice um, executed average price. So at the moment, 
the PyDGX Omnipool is actually making full use of this and eating our own dog food uh, as it's currently um, DCAing out of DAI protocol liquidity into HDX, IBTC, and DOT. Um, and if you go on our Discord and check out the OmniWatch channel, uh, you can have fun with the DGNs in there. Soon, we will release uh, an additional UI. Um, it's the same feature behind the back, um, but essentially what it is is on the conventional trade screen, whenever a user ha is perhaps trying to do a large trade, it offers an alternative to break that trade down into multiple other trades. Um, it will automatically, for a one quick solution, uh, work out the most efficient way for you to execute your order. Looking at this paradigm research here, you can see if, say, for example, a whale was dumping 10 wrapped Bitcoin, that must be a super deep pool, but they're suffering, say, 0.37% price impact. If they'd have broken that down into, say, 10 1 WBTC um, trades, that would be significantly lower. You're just relying on arbitrages in the meantime to, to make sure that the markets return to parity. Not that parity. And uh, we have the OTC feature, which we did use uh, in order to accumulate uh, native USDT and IBTC for, for the Omnipool. Um, it allows for trustless swaps of any two assets between any number of parties. Um, if you think about all those times when a token is unlocked but not tradable anywhere, and you get all these people in uh, Telegram who are wanting to be so helpful and help everybody by buying at a really reasonable price, uh, and then you get wrecked through being scammed. Now you can trust the Omnipool to be the middleman in those. But how can we make it even more efficient? So I'm going to speculate on a few other ways which we are hoping to be able to scale that efficiency further um, in order to make it the most capitally efficient AMM. So order batching, this has been on our roadmap for quite a while and we've talked about it quite a few times. Um, this essentially allows, this, this takes advantage of the fact that we're our own L1 producing our own blocks, right? So we get to decide how those blocks are assembled and, and who, who has the, the rights to do so. So essentially what this would do is it would net off uh, opposing directional trades within the same block before trading the remainder in the Omnipool. What this allows is when you have a really busy AMM going with lots of trades going in opposite directions, especially with the likes of the DCA, which is just peppering constant bids in every direction every time. It allows for you to have a much smaller price impact on all of those trades in opposing directions so everybody benefits from that jointly. So super excited for, for, for this feature. But you can make it even better, taking it a step further. Um, by that small amount that is then traded in the Omnipool, let's try and get it so that that doesn't actually have to trade in the Omnipool, right? So through some sort of back-running mechanism, you could auction off the rights to essentially close that arbitrage opportunity within the same block. So rather than currently when Whale comes in, dumps a load, there's a big arbitrage opportunity, all of the R bots come in and try to close that um, to make as um, much money as they can, as quickly as they can. Meanwhile, anybody who's trading is doing so at a, a disadvantaged price. This would allow the, within the block the price to remain whatever the market neutral price is, um, which helps to, to keep things uh, more efficient, and especially again, while you've got um, DCA breaking down those orders into multiple, multiple ones in different, op um, in different directions, um, then it just, again, it's, it's just taking the Omnipool as an as a initial building block and then adding these Legos on top uh, in order to just squeeze out that extra little bit of efficiency um, wherever possible. So, I've been rambling for a little while now, so I want to wrap it up. So, treasuries and DAOs can utilize the Omnipool in order to provide a, almost provide a service to their uh, supporters um, that allows them to keep custody of their funds trustlessly um, allow their users to trade with their, with their asset. It gives them access to a multitude of other assets um, in a, in a um, secure environment and with all these additional features that I mentioned previously. The TLDR, TLDR is all assets in one pool, efficiency go brr. And remember, stay hydrated, not liquidated.
Yeah, perfect. Thank you so much. Hopefully, um, really, the Omnipool gets adoption at a lot of parachains, treasuries, DAOs. Um, you guys are here around. You guys also have a booth these days, so can people find out more about Omnipool? Or? We don't have a booth, but we're mostly wearing these T-shirts. Perfect. So. That's how you find the guys, please. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. Thank you so much. Thanks.